Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm making a rear bumper and a swing out tire carrier for the old 3B. I'm not sure if I've ever shown this on the channel or not. This is an old spare tire carrier and jerry can carrier I got with a bunch of CJ5 parts one time. And it's kind of been just sitting up in the barn and I've never really had anything I wanted to put it on. I thought it looked super cool on this though, cause you know, it's kind of rusty and kind of homemade looking and stuff. But I'll throw a picture up there. I posted it on Instagram weeks ago, but with my spare tire on here, you're hanging out. I think it's 20 inches from the tailgate to where the tire ends up at, which is just insanely far out. So sadly, I'm not gonna be able to use it like it is. And I've got some ideals. I'm gonna try and rework this thing. I've got a big piece of this, I think it's quarter wall or 3 16 wall, two by four, just like I did on the front bumper. So I'm going to use that for my main piece. Something else weird about this, whoever made it, I don't think this is a mass produced piece. I think this is a homemade piece. Whoever made it though, this would end up bolting like to your rear cross member here. And the whole thing drops down this way, which is really strange especially with gas cans there and stuff. So I'm gonna do away with that. I wanna turn it into a swing out. I'll use these jerry can holders somewhere else. This is the main piece I'm probably gonna save off this. All right, so let's get into All this. Right, so I've got this kind of mocked up here. It's gonna to have to set out away from the Jeep just a little bit because my swing out tire carrier. I'll show you all that here in a second. I'm gonna slope these in, I'm gonna cut some angles just like your original draw bar would have on it. I'll throw a picture up there to give y'all an idea of what I'm talking about. But just kind of angle these in. I think it'll look really good. Also, I would have preferred to cut it off here on the other side of this light because I think a stubby bumper looks better. But the reason I left it out on the other side of this light is it gives your light protection. That way if you come down on that corner real hard, it ain't gonna smash that tail light in. Here's my swing out tire carrier stuff from EMS Off-Road. I actually saw this on Dirt Lifestyle. Nate used this on his Disco Overland build. It's really cool though, because you get actual tapered bearings with it. And then of course, you've got your machine spindle here. This is your little piece that your bearing cups press into. I think this was around 50 bucks or so. If you tried to make this though, I think you'd have way more time and probably the same money or more in it. This is your clamp to hold everything tight in place. This is a little pivot piece that you can actually use to control like where your swing out stops at. It'll lock it in place. It's a really good kit. I'll have it linked down below in the description. All right, so I think the best place to start on projects like this is figuring out how you're gonna mount it, where you're gonna mount it. The front bumper, I was willing to weld it all to the frame because I think the front of the frame needed that extra support. Back here, I want the option to take this bumper back off if I want to. So that means we're gonna have to make this thing easily removable. So what I'm thinking here is we can either go to the outside of that frame rail or to the inside of it. Of course, that's capped right now. I have to cut that off. I'm gonna go to the inside of that. I've got some nice big chunks. These are one inch thick, I think two and three eighths wide, and then a little over eight inches long. I think these will fit right up inside them frame rails. I'm gonna drill and tap these, and then you can bolt the bumper from the outside into this versus having to get a wrench up in there and hold a nut while you bolt through this, through your frame. I think this will be stronger too, because these frames are not very thick. Also, I think I'm gonna do, possibly cut one of these in half and make me some little spacers with a plate welded to it, and we'll do two or four bolt holes probably one here and one there because i think i might try and run a receiver hitch on this too i think that'll be plenty strong so let's go ahead and get started
All right, so I got these cut out. I pretty much had, just had to cut that little tab that was folded over. That whole section had to come out. I did repair this when I was redoing the frame. This is like a big piece of C channel here. And then this little plate that steps out. I was trying to make it look like the original draw bar back then. If I had to do it over again, I would probably move it out just a touch, maybe an inch or two. That way that gas tank could have come back another inch or two. Would put us closer to the outside of this tub here. It just would have worked out better. But I'm gonna make it work the way it is. So I went ahead and put my two little mountain blocks in here. These are recycled. So they've got some extra holes in them. You ain't gonna be able to see that, especially once I trim it off and stick it up inside that piece of two by four. Filled in the holes on this side just because that's probably the side people might see them on. So I stuck them in here, got them leveled up, and put a couple little tacks on there to keep everything nice and square. Now the reason I did that is because I'm gonna have to drill me two holes through the frame into that block, and then I'm gonna tap it. That way I can just bolt straight through the frame into these. You don't have to do it this way. I just think it's easier because you ain't gotta do all the measuring and stuff. You know that them holes are gonna line up with these holes, the spread's gonna be perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and drill these. Then we'll get the tube, cut it out to fit. Maybe go ahead and put the chamfers on it, slide it up in here, and then we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with that tire carrier. All right, so I just want to explain real quick what I just did here. So the reason I put these on here and got them leveled and tacked them on is so when I drilled them holes, I drilled through the frame into that and it marked my two holes. So then all I had to do was take them back off, cut the tacks, and I could throw that up on the drill press and drill it and then tap it. And then I've got some half inch bolts right there, bolting it on. I did the same thing on both sides. I had absolutely no issue getting them bolts to start in. You could see they just screwed in by hand. It was a perfect fit and everything leveled back up nice. I've got this thing centered up pretty good right here. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna make my cutouts at. And the way I'm gonna do this is similar to something I did on the front bumper. I'm gonna cut through both sides and let these come all the way through this bumper. Then I'm gonna cut these off at the length I need that way I can weld it on both sides of this and I can put my recovery points, my clevis mounts, they can go right in front of these. So you're pulling right with the frame. Also, I mentioned I might do some little supports here too, cause I'm thinking about putting the receiver hitch on here and that'll just add that much more strength. Uh, with these, I think I'd weld them to here and bolt them to here. That way we'd have bolts going this way and bolts going this way. And there should be no way you could ever rip that off. Here's something you're gonna get into a lot working on these old Jeeps. So I got all this laid out. I actually did all my measurements off the Jeep, you know, where everything's at right now. Then I took it off the Jeep and used my square. I wanted to show you all this though. So this measurement right here for this brace, it's like 10 and seven eighths, right under 11. Look at this one over here. This one's like 12 and three quarters or so. So that's how much difference we got in between these. I told y'all this frame reel is a little bent and you can kind of see my lines are a little crooked to match that because this has got to go through this tube. So the only way anyone's ever going to notice this is maybe looking at the hinge positions. 
you can see right there is our difference but if you look at where the lights are at i mean we're right there that measures out perfect so it's going to be good enough and like i said this is all going to get welded up ground down you're never going to see it Well, how'd we do? I'd be lying if I said it went on the first time. I had to do just a little bit more trimming. It really wasn't too bad though. Got pretty dang close on both sides with where I cut my holes out at. It slipped on pretty good. So as far as side to side, my measurements and everything, it looks like going off this square, we're right there at that tail light over here. We're about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch or so off. Don't hurt my feelings too bad. I'll just make it up right here. Just cut that a little bit more off. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. So I've got this thing knocked in here. I'm gonna leave this thing the way it is for now because now we're gonna turn our attention over to here. And I gotta figure out how I'm gonna make this tire carrier work with this setup right here. I gotta leave enough space here for that spindle so everything can pivot. Gotta think about all this stuff. So I think the best way to go is leave it floating until I get this thing figured out. Like I said, this come with a bunch of old CJ5 parts I bought one time. I'm almost sure this is homemade. It looks like this tubing is just black iron pipe. And then of course, just some angle and plate. These little jerry can holders are cool. I kind of hate to tear this thing apart, but at the same time, nobody's going to want to use it. I actually did list it for sale for a while. Nobody was interested in it. So I don't feel that bad about tearing it apart. What I'm thinking I'm going to do here this is the part I want to salvage for now. I'm going to take this tube off because it's already got some good bends in it. Whoever made this did a pretty good job. I'm going to modify it though so we can use it for a swing out instead of a swing down. All right, so I got this all cleaned up, got them brackets cut off where it was welded at, and I cut the little feet off where they'd smushed it down to make the little pivot points. So now maybe all I've been talking about will make a little bit more sense. This is about where this tire carrier is gonna end up at. These tubes right here should be like right in line with the bumper when it's all said and done. I've got to turn these legs in. That's the next thing I'm gonna do. And then right here is where my spindle is going to be at. And of course, this is the weldable portion of it. So I'm going to cut me out a hole and sink it down inside this tube. And like I said, when I chamfer this, it'll give me the ability to get in there, weld it really good, and maybe put some gussets on it, some nice supports. You can see I've got this little bitty window here. I won't block my light, and I can still drop the tailgate. But that should line up really nice. I might bring the bumper out just a little bit more, just a touch. I think this is going to look really sweet though. This matches the Jeep so good. So slight change of plans. I ended up, I couldn't use these. These were the original bins and you can see it's just a really wonky shape. I'm gonna guess they bent this with like a torch and just heating it up and bend it. It's kind of kinked up. It just wasn't gonna work. It for sure wasn't gonna look good. So I did the old Bubba bin. I made like 15 cuts, maybe a quarter inch or so apart, I think. And then screwdriver and a chisel and just real slow. I got that angle I was looking for. It looks pretty good. I wish I had a tube bender to do this the right way. Harbor Freight's got one for like 150 bucks, but it gets bad reviews. You gotta do all these stupid things to even make it work. And I couldn't justify spending all that money on this little project, maybe next time. So anyways, I've got this piece bent now, and this actually removed one weld joint, which is probably a good thing. And then I've got this drilled out here. 
both sides same right here so i can plug weld this little slug on so i can slide these together and this should be a really tight solid joint it's a little setback but all in all i think this is going to end up looking a lot better than trying to reuse the old stuff all right y'all so this turned out really good it's got a nice bend to it i don't think you'll ever be able to tell this wasn't bent on an actual like pipe bender or something so the next thing we got to do there'll be a kickoff right here we'll come down and then we'll sweep with this right here that'll give us two nice legs i might do a couple little supports right there too this thing's gonna look really cool on the back of the jeep though got that other piece bent up here you can see how that all looks this is that nice little gap i was talking about i do have to measure and make sure i've got enough on that tube to weld this to that i don't go too wide but i think this is plenty short you can see i marked out them quarter inch marks and then cut them slowly bent them put them in the vise and i kind of worked them with a screwdriver so they all bend evenly but i think the worst is behind me i'm gonna weld this up get this cut to length and then we'll go back over there to the bumper and figure out spacing and all that i don't think i did too bad for not having a pipe bender i think it's going to be really hard to tell that i didn't use a bender on that obviously i left these long because once i get this spindle in here that's when i'm going to cut these things to length of course cope the ends i think the next step i'm going to go ahead and chamfer the ends of this bumper real quick i got this thing all marked up i went halfway up the tube made a mark and then i went right to the edge of where the tailgate is that's where i made my other mark and then i marked that angle i've got that little piece i need to trim off this side a little quarter three eighths of an inch or so but let's fire up the plasma cutter and cut this thing All right, y'all, so I got the bumper back on there. Chamfers look really good, look pretty uniform. I wanted to show y'all real quick before I tack this. I've got this thing pretty dang close to level, both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this in place and I might wait to finish weld this until I have everything on here. I make sure everything's gonna work. I just went ahead and finished welded them. Honestly, I couldn't think of a reason not to while everything was square and level. I just got my little angle finder here today. I've been waiting for it to show up and look at this. 0.7, that's not terrible. And like 0.4. So I got that thing pretty dang close. Now one of the faults with the way that I bolted this to the Jeep is because it's bolted like that, there's some slop in them holes for it to do this right here. I've got the remedy for that and we'll get to it here in a minute. But first, now that I got my angle finder, I can finally set up my spindle. So I need to mark out where this is gonna go. And we'll blow that hole out, stick that spindle in. And then like I said, we've got access to weld that thing real good now because we got this end blown out. So let's go ahead and fire up the plasma cutter and cut that hole out. All right, y'all, so before we go any further, first off, I wanna say the best way to do this would be with a hole saw that's the correct diameter of the spindle. It just drop right in there. Plasma cutting, it's a little dirtier. It ain't gonna be as form fitting and everything. It'll be fine, welded up, and you'll never know the difference. But that being said, making a tire carrier out of black iron pipe, I'm not gonna recommend it. I'm only using it because that's what that old one was made out of. And honestly, at this point, I probably could have just made one from scratch and been better off. But I'm already so far down the rabbit hole, I'm just gonna keep going with it. Cutting and bending stuff like I did, you know, I think that's gonna be just as strong. It's gonna be fine. It's a lot more time, a lot more work. But I just can't justify buying a whole saw kit and then buying a big pipe bender and everything for this little project. So on one hand, I'm doing the right thing the wrong way, but at the same time, I'm showing y'all, you ain't gotta have all these fancy tools you ain't gotta have all this great equipment to build cool stuff in your shop. So with that being said, let's keep going with this thing. All right, drop this thing down in here. I 
All right, so I got this right where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a few tacks on it. Then we'll readjust because it'll probably move just a little bit. Y'all can see I got a little gap right there because there is a little bearing seal that's gonna go up inside there. So I don't wanna weld up too close to that machine surface. Got maybe, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch poking up right there. So let's go ahead and tack this in place and then we'll see about shoring it up inside the tube. So I took my whole spindle assembly back off and then I put my angle finder directly on the spindle itself. And it was just a little bit off, maybe like a degree and a half or something. So I tapped it around and then I've got some decent tacks all the way around it. I should have cleaned it up. You can see it's splattering a little bit. Make sure you wrap your spindle up with something, tape, or I've got just a cardboard tube taped on there because you're gonna get splatter and you don't want that on your shaft. Now I think before I weld this in place, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tire carrier to length, go ahead and notch the ends, and I'm gonna tack it on here. We'll just make sure everything looks right, swing it out, make sure it's not gonna do some kind of funky swing or something, make sure we're not running into anything. And then once all that's set, I'll be comfortable going ahead and finish welding that, bracing it up, finish welding that, We've got a few more things left to do on here, more than y'all probably expect. So let's go ahead and get after this. So I coped the ends and got those right where I wanted them. That was pretty easy. Then I had to stack a couple pieces of metal. So I got that pretty close to right in the middle of that spindle. I just wanted it to be, you know, symmetric. Then up here, y'all can say whatever you want about this, but it worked. So I took this piece of wire and run through them holes in the tailgate, twisted it. And then I worked it until I was right near 90 degrees, which that's close enough for me because there's no guarantees that plate's perfect either. I went ahead and put me a few little tacks down there. So let's go ahead and pull these shims out and we'll see what happens. I want to show y'all the angle on this as it swings out. It does change a little bit. But I mean, that is very, very little. That's about as close as you can okay, get. Okay, so I went ahead and whipped up a quick little rest for this. So you're gonna want something obviously to support the weight out here. So this is just a piece of like two by two quarter wall tubing. And it's got just a little bit of drag to it, which is what you want. Cause you want that holding the weight. You don't want it, you know, drooping down over time. So now that we got our rest here, we can go ahead and figure out how we're gonna latch this thing. Now the EMS kit, comes with a Desteco clamp and it's a real Desteco. It's not a Chinese knockoff. So I think this is gonna to need to go right up in here somewhere. And then we'll need a latch right here. There is a geometry to this. These are designed to work in a specific way. So we need to make sure that wherever our catch goes, our latch is in the right place where it's gonna pull it in nice and tight. So a little change of plans. It took me, gosh, probably two hours to figure this clamp out. I wanted to try and do something a little bit you know, tied her up because I don't like the way that's hanging out there. But all the different ways I tried it just wasn't working. It wasn't pulling itself in tight like it should. What I finally come up with, you need to set these up where this is less than a 90 degree angle for this to work properly. Just the design of this handle and stuff. 
So I made this block. I think it's like three eighths. I drilled and tapped it. I had some fine thread 5 16 button heads laying around. So I made that little block. I've just got it tacked on. And then I actually swapped out my rest from what I showed y'all. This is a chunk of Delrin I had laying around. I just kind of whipped it up real quick. It works really good. This is really similar to what EMS Off-Road sells in one of their other kits, or I think you might can buy it separate. But it's just a nice little chamfered edge and a rest for that to go up into. And then our catch block, I actually ended up, I'm gonna finish making that a nice clean chamfer there. And I've got a few spots here from them old holes I filled in. I gotta clean up. You can see though, I've got a bunch of tacks here cause I just kept moving this thing around trying to get to work right. I kept moving this up and down. I like these Desteco clamps. I know they're really good, but golly, you wanna talk about a bunch of work to get this thing to work right. So now that I've got this sorted out, there's a handful more things to do. It just takes a lot of time. So I'm probably gonna speed through some of it. I'll just give you all the quick highlights. This is one thing though, I do wanna show y'all. So this is just your standard trailer hitch receiver. I'm gonna cut me out a section in the middle of this bumper and slide this thing through. And then back there at my actual frame cross member, I'm gonna make me a plate for the back of that to bolt to. And I'm gonna cut it off where it's nice and tied up against there. There ain't a bunch sticking out. This is gonna be my third place for this to bolt to the Jeep though. Cause I need something pulling it in this way. Cause the way these are right now, it just lets the bumper kind of float like that. So I'll have four bolts there. This will be welded to the bumper to hold everything nice and tight. This will be good and stout. Probably gonna redrill that hole just a little bit closer so I can get it up tighter to the bumper. I got something real cool I'm gonna show y'all. A guy on Instagram actually come up with it. Let's go ahead and figure this trailer hitch out first. show you all this real quick so what i've done i've cut my receiver hitch down to the length i need i've got my plate in there it's a little crooked because it's just floating right now so what i did is i kind of tacked them together then i've got some tacks on here i put a hitch on here this is off my dodge just make sure everything's square and even and everything and i put my little angle finder on here and made sure all this was nice and true so now what i'm going to do i'm going to get this plate squared up with all this Make sure everything's nice and even. And then I'm gonna tack that plate to this cross member. Then I'm gonna pull this whole bumper off. I can drill and tap them holes, cut the tacks, clean everything up, finish weld it all. Then when I stick this back on there, all I gotta do is tack that plate, unbolt it, pull it back off, and then finish weld that plate to that receiver. I think this is the only way it's gonna work where I'm not gonna end up having too much gap there or something. And then these holes are gonna get jacked up. I think this is the safest way to do it, so let's go ahead and get after it. Hopefully everything I said makes sense. So I got this welded up. I've got my plate drilled and tapped. It's bolted on there. I gotta tack all this up. Then I'll pull that bumper back off. I can weld it all up. I know this is pulled super tight up against here. I know my distance between here and here is gonna be correct. It's not gonna mess this stuff up. All this is set to pretty much zero degrees, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4 degrees. I checked it when I tighten everything back up. So let's tack this up, pull it back off again. I might go ahead and tack my clevis mounts on too, but I can weld them up while I've got all this other stuff off. Got a lot done here, but believe it or not, we still got a little ways to go. So let's keep after it. All right, so I took a little piece of quarter inch plate and I notched it out to fit my spindle right there. 
All right, so now that I got that piece in there and all that supported, I can go ahead and cap these ends. All right, y'all, so I went ahead and capped these ends. I got it all welded up, took it off and ground it all down. Of course, I got my clevis mounts on now. These are the same ones like I used on the front. Receiver hitch is all welded up. Got that plate all welded up. Everything's bolted. Everything's tight. And as far as I'm concerned, I think I'm done with this whole lower half. Now we're gonna move on to this. And you're probably thinking, we're just gonna bolt this thing back on and we're gonna be done with this project. But I got a little trick up my sleeve. I'm gonna show y'all what that is. So something that kind of bugs me about this tire carrier anyways, is whoever put this plate on, it's not clocked correctly. You know, the bolt pattern could be like a nice triangle or what have you, but it's clocked weird and stuff. That kind of stuff just bugs me. It looks sloppy. So a guy on Instagram, I'll throw his username up here. You need to go give him a follow. He's got a really cool TDI swap, little diesel flat fender. But he made his tire carrier with an old hub. Now this is a hub off of a Dana 25 axle. It's no good, a wheel bearing went bad in it. But what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna cut it down and weld it up on top of this tire carrier right here. And then you've got a place to put a spare hub and it's gonna look really cool. So I'll just give y'all a closer look real quick. This hub right here has got this big piece on the back of it, this big cast piece where it holds your bearing and everything. I'm gonna cut that off. And then believe it or not, this diameter is the same as this diameter. So that's gonna make it real easy to find the center of this. I'm gonna cut that down and then I'm gonna cut a circle the same diameter as whatever the ID of that right there is. Stick them together, weld it up, and then I'll have a really cool plate to mount my spare tire on, and I'll have the option of carrying a spare hub with me. Well, y'all, I think that about wraps up this project. Well, that sure took a lot longer than I was expecting. I was thinking maybe like 12 hours or so. I'm gonna guess I've got somewhere between 20 and 25 hours in this build right here. It turned out really good though. I took my time. I made everything super beefy. I made sure things were as square as they could be, as level as they could be. And all that effort and all that time paid off because this thing looks so good. One piece I was missing to finish this whole build off is a drive flange. I do have one, it's up in the barn. I just left it over there and forgot it. That'll bolt on to where your hub can go. You can also run a spare hub on there if you want to. I think I'm just gonna run a drive flange for now. As usual, I'll have everything I used in this video linked down in the description. Appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all next time.